In this video, guys, we're going to look at six key lessons from the book Pitbull. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so those of you who've been on the channel a while or been around a while know this is one of my favorite trading books, one of my top 10 trading books. It's called Pitbull. It's by Marty Schwartz, and it's a story about a trader who has gone through kind of lots of different ups and downs, a successful trader, you know, seven figure trader, doing well, but it's a nice storybook. And I always think that within these storybooks of traders, the one pit to the PC, I'm reading one at the moment by Linda Rashke, Trading Sardines, which I'll have a review up for you guys as soon as I finish that. But all these storybooks are interesting because and I guess reminiscence of a stock operator as well, not quite the same thing, but they kind of talk about the individual trades and talk about some of the highs and the lows and some of the points in the time that they remember specifically. And perhaps they go into some type of strategy, but it's not like an in-depth strategy book of do this, do that, do the other, but they still cover some of that. But I think it's really good because there's, there's so many nuggets of wisdom and useful info when people are telling stories about their trading, about their journey, about what highs and the lows and all that kind of stuff that, you know, you really get a lot of useful information from it as well as being entertained. I mean, guys, we love the markets, we love trading, so that's a good enough reason to listen to it. But if you're getting some information as well that's helping your trading, even better, right? So I definitely recommend getting that. Go and check it out on Amazon or, I don't think it's unaudible actually, I've had a look, but it's not, uh, Amazon, you can get it. I don't know what it is now for a paperback. Probably not a lot, so worth getting. Anyway, six lessons that I've taken from this book that are well worth kind of bearing in mind and thinking about a little bit more deeply. All right, first one, three-day rule. So technical lesson, this objective lesson, this is something that actually, uh, we, I think we talked about this a little bit before. Um, this is talking a little bit more in regard to stocks, but I think it's kind of general for other things as well. Three-day rule is when you've had two good up days of move, the third day is not a day to buy. In other words, don't chase the move on day three. You're looking for either a counter trend sneaky little trade or not buying at all. And I didn't talk about a counter trend sneaky trade. This you just said, listen, if the market's been up or a stock has been up three days, you know, don't buy it, wait for a decent pullback. That's a pretty good rule to me. So number two is how markets react to news. So this is something I go on about so much, guys. I've thought I talked about it on the channel as well. And there's, I'll talk about the response to news is key. The response to levels is key. That's what it's all about. And the same thing uh, Marty talks about here is the response to news. So good news, if the market is reacting badly to good news, pay attention. That is something that is telling you something. The tape is telling you a story that is different from the headlines. So pay attention to that. Number three, guys, new highs and lows is a good screener. So this perspective is talking about screening for stocks that are active, stocks that are taking out highs, lows, 20-day highs, year highs, etc. Same for any market you're trading, trading currency pairs, commodities, indices, etc. Anything that's moving through key highs or lows is worth trading and or at least worth watching for trading setups. Because anything that's doing that is generally going to be active. There's more supply and demand imbalance, which equals more opportunity for us as traders. All right, number four, first trade back. So this is really saying, okay, when you've been on holiday or there's been a long break or there's been a forced holiday or whatever it may be, when you come back into the markets, trade very small, very carefully, and be very, very cautious. You know, this happens all the time, guys. I've, I've recognized it myself, and so I'm very careful on my first trade back. If I've been away, if I've been on a holiday, if it's been a long weekend because of Labor Day or whatever day it may be, and you come back into it, just be mindful. You've got all things like, you know, gaps in your charts are unusual because it's been a day, if it's been Labor Day or something. You've got other things like, you know, you're not in tune with the markets as well. You're not ready, not prepared. And so first trade back, always being very, very cautious. Small size, just get one in there, wait for the setup, play it, play it, and until you get a feel for it, because you can be significantly out of tune with the market, with the risk, with the flow, with the pace, all that kind of stuff. Number five, divorce ego from the trade. A uh, pretty good one, this. You know, we, we know that we shouldn't become too attached to the trade. We shouldn't be like, hey, if it wins, I'm a you know, chest beating, I'm an absolute beast. If it loses, I feel like the worst thing in the world. Listen, we need to regulate that, be a little bit more calm around things and not put our ego uh, into the trade because the market doesn't like ego, guys. It's got a habit of, of, of hammering us if we if we take our ego to the trading floor. All right, fade breakouts in non-trending days. So sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? But 
really what he's saying here is, uh, listen, you know, when markets aren't trending and the environment's not trending, then he was talking specifically about locals in the pit. So not so prevalent now, of course, but locals would drive it up through highs, take the stops out, drive it back through lows, take the stops out. They'll be driving, looking for liquidity. And markets tend to trade to liquidity as well. You have to look at a chart yourself, whatever chart that may be, and you can see how many times we break through highs and fade again. Break through highs, fade again in a non-trending range bound environment. So the kind of takeaway from this is if we're not trending, if we are chopping around, faking out, and we, and we don't seem to be doing anything, anything significant, then don't start buying fresh highs, don't start selling fresh lows. If you want to go one step further, start fading that kind of stuff. And yes, appreciate the transition from kind of range to trending is a bit ambiguous at times, but if there's a general rule and you can see the conditions, then at least wait for some confirmation that you're in a trend before you start buying breakouts and stuff. So I think guys, six good rules uh, from Pitbull and definitely recommend it if you haven't got it. Uh, it's by Marty Schwartz and it's called Pitbull Lessons from Wall Street's Champion Day Trader. Check it out. Take care. Bye-bye.